and welcome to Grandad's Reviews. In this video, I'm going to have a look at using film cameras. So, you want to try film. I'm going to break down this into a bit of a series, so that each video is not too long. And the first, this first one, I'm going to look at the economics of actually using a film camera. So, you've decided you want to try film, you've <clears throat> looked on YouTube, seen a few videos, a few um, reviews on different film cameras and how to use them and what to do with film. And so you've decided to take the plunge. But let's have a look at the economics of it. And I'm just going to compare it to digital. We're going used because that's where you're going to get a film camera. You're only going to get a used film camera. There's no uh, mass produced new film cameras available. There's a few uh, little companies doing things, but mass produced wise, you've got nothing. Now the prices are going to be as of when I've made this video because they're so volatile. They're up and down like a yo-yo, it's ridiculous. So we're going to look at the used on both sides. So if you're going to go digital, you'd probably pick up something like this. So you'd probably pick up a small digital camera like that. Or maybe you'd pick something like this with a lens, obviously. I've got my lens on at the moment. But you also probably got a digital camera already on you as in your phone. And cost wise, so you're looking between 100 to 500 plus for a digital camera, or if you've got a mobile phone, it's whatever you're paying on your contract, and that's your initial cost in digital. So look at film. Now you could go, you could go for something like this, small compact film camera, does everything for you, stick the film in, away you go. Or you could go for something like this, an old film SLR, it's an Olympus OM-10, Thousands of them made. You can get them reasonably cheap. Well, they're always uh, going up and down in price. See if you can get one with the manual adapter as well, because they'll give it uh, more control over the camera. But as it is, it's still an excellent camera with a lens. Or look for something a bit more less popular. This Minolta X9 and these later... Minolta film cameras aren't so popular, but you're getting them reasonably cheap. So film cameras you're looking, well, I paid £15 for that little compact and the X9, I actually only paid £30. So we're looking between £15 and £100. Now you're going to want to do something with the images when you've got them finally back. So as in with a digital camera, you're either going to use a tablet, your phone, or a computer. So as a fixed cost to go with that, if you were starting from nothing, let's say, you're going to probably add another £200 or more to your initial outlay. Now, the same can be said in the film. When you've got your film developed and scanned at a lab, say, you want to put it on a computer to edit them and probably upload them. And again, you're looking at the same kind of price for a computer. But if you're going to do... A different way and just get the negatives back and scan them yourself you're gonna have to add that to it so you're probably looking about 400 pound if you want to use a scanner and a computer 400 plus and 200 plus if you're just going to go to computer now the other thing you're going to need for both cameras you're going to need a memory card like this for your digital camera and a roll of film like this for your film camera so what's the costs a memory card such as this you can get them for 25, 30 pound, that's it. And the good thing about it is, once you've took your images and you've took them onto your computer, you can wipe this and start again. So that's it. You don't have to buy any more. Roll of film. It's a roll of 36 black and white. You can obviously go 36 on a colour. And again, a roll of 36 is the most economical way of doing it. So you'll be looking at per image. So each 36 image is going to cost you between... 14 pence and 20 pence for a roll of 36. So a roll of 36, each one image on there will cost you between 14p and 20p. Now you can't obviously erase and start again, so each roll is going to cost you that. You then have to send it away to be developed. So if you send it away to be developed, it's about the same again. So another 14 to 20p per image to have it developed. If you develop it at home, it's going to cost you about 5p but you're going to have to spend initially another £100 on developing equipment and then you've got the ongoing 
cost of the chemicals, which makes it 5p per image to develop this roller. If you want scans, obviously if you send it away to for developed at a lab, then they can do the scans for you. So you're looking for a develop and scan of a roll of 36 at between 34 and 45p per image. Obviously if you're going to develop it at home and scan it yourself on your own scanner, then that you haven't got that cost. So let's say you're going to take 36 shots on this memory card. You're going to use a roll of 36 images on the roll of film, develop the roll of film, have it scanned, and you're going to print out 36 6 before prints, either at from a lab, online, or down to your local boots. And you're going to do the same with this digital. You're going to take 36 images on this, and then you're going to get 36 6 before prints. What's that going to cost you? For the digital, it's going to cost you £18 for those 36 prints. That's it, nothing else. If you send it away to a, a lab for a develop, scan, and print, you're looking at £39 per roll. So for those 36, £39. If you develop and scan at home and then have them printed, it's going to cost you £27. But more than likely, you're not going to produce prints, even on your digital camera. You're just going to put them up on social media and that's it. So you've got no cost after, no cost at all on the digital. You've done all the initial outlay, you just put them on the computer and send them on. do not cost you anything to put them online. To do it with film, so if you have the film devved and scanned and you just put them online, it's going to cost you £21 for that roll of 36. But if you dev and scan them as yourselves and put them online, and you're not going to print, it's only going to cost you £9. So there's a big saving there. There's not a big saving if you're doing a print, but if you're just going to put them online, there's a bigger saving. But that's an ongoing cost. With the digital, you're just going to wipe that card. You're going to put more images on, wipe it, and it's not going to cost you any more. But with the film camera, every time you shoot a roll, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you 14 to 20p per image you take every time. It's going to cost you to have them developed. So if you send them away, 14 to 20p for every one. So basically every time you shoot a roll of this, if you send it to a lab and use the scan, it's going to cost you £21 every time you use this roll. That's £21 for 36 shots every time, or £9 if you're doing it yourself. If you're just doing a roll a month, that's not too bad. But if you really, let's say, trying to learn, you're going to go through quite a few of these rolls could be costing you, say you go out every week, £20 a week for one roll of film. So yes, I think getting into film photography is a great way to learn photography. It certainly slows you down compar compared to digital because you have to think about each frame and the fact that it's costing you money for each frame. But it's not very economical. It's not cheap. So please be aware of that. If you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. That helps the channel. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, see you later.